Welcome pedestrians. This is McGarren Flack. Just going to go over a couple of things in terms of gesture drawing. And, you know, just to kind of preface this, everybody does gesture drawing a little bit different and everybody has their own little theories about what is right and what is wrong with gesture drawing. To summarize, gesture drawing is just a quick drawing. So you're trying to get the action of an individual or an object and gesture drawing allows you to be able to do that quickly and effectively. So how do we get to an effective gesture drawing quickly? And uh, most gestures, they're timed. They're like 30 seconds to five minutes. Some of them even go to like 10, 20 minutes. But um, we need to focus on how to manage our time better when drawing a gesture. And the first thing that I think is most important is actually drawing the figure with a single line. So this is called a line of action or LOA. And a line of action is basically just a line. So if, if I had an individual standing here, I would just draw a nice vertical line because that would be the line of action for what the pose is actually doing. If their head was up here and their torso is here and their pelvis is here and their legs are here, that's the line of action for that figure. If I have another figure that kind of curves like this, that might be the line of action for somebody who is looking down like this and their legs coming out and then the other one is kind of dropping back. So that might be a line of action for that figure. So line of action can go through the figure, can go on the outside of the figure, it can be the center line of various shapes, but the line of action describes the action with one single line. So line of action, step number one. If you can see that, I don't, I don't even know if you can see that, but maybe you can see that. Okay, so line of action, that is step number one. The next step is actually something that's kind of intermediate, it's in between, and it is understanding proportional relationships. So I'm going to go over these proportional relationships for a figure. And again, they are just general relationships. These are not finite, exact replicas. It's just general. And when you're drawing something for a couple of minutes, you can't be specific. If you are specific, I mean, you'd, you'd spend all two minutes just drawing the contour of an eye because you have to be so specific. So we need to simplify proportions and understanding these proportions is pretty good. So here is my line. I'm gonna use the same one as a reference. If I were to take the top of this line and the bottom of this line, now that would be my whole figure. It would need to fit within that line, the start and end point of that line. If I were to take it and cut it in half, Cut it in half. I'm going to just do a quick measure to see how close I was. I was pretty close. It was a little bit high. But if I cut it in half there, if I cut it in half, this is basically where the pubic bone sits. Pubic. So the pubic bone sits right into the middle. If you were to take these other dimensions in the top half and divide it into four equal parts. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. They're pretty close to being equal. In this top fourth is the dimension of the head. So the head is one fourth of the entire upper torso. And um, the width of the head is about half, just a little bit over half the height of the head. Okay, let's go, go down. We're gonna put a space here between the head kind of a middle space. And this is, again, just general. We're trying to keep this as simple as possible. And we go from the top of that point to the bottom of the next one. That would be the rib cage. So pretty self-explanatory there. Um, the rib cage is just as wide as the height of the head. So if I were to take this head height and rotate on its side, that would be the width. And then we have the pelvis which is also the same width, it just goes a little bit lower than the center line. Remember, this center line is the pubic bone. And technically, you have these little guys that are back here. Those are the ischium or the sitting bones. 
and the ischium is a little bit lower than the pubic bone. So that middle line is the pubic bone. The pelvis goes a little bit lower than the pubic bone. Then if you take the second half, the bottom half here, and you cut it in half, that's basically where the knees sit. So you bring the legs in like this, knees sit right about there, and then they go all the way down to the ground and you have feet that are sitting there. Where do the arms go and where do they sit? Here's a pretty simple way to do it. If you go from the top of the rib cage and just draw a straight line out, and then you drop one of the lines, the elbow goes to the bottom of the rib cage. So right there, bottom of the rib cage. And then if you continue that line to the pubic bone, that's where the wrist sits, right there. And then the hand just extends a little bit further. So these are the general proportions of the body. Yes, yeah, some people have shorter torsos, other people have shorter legs, and they expand and contract depending on who specifically you're drawing. But if you can memorize these general proportions, it will really, really help you with being able to shorthand draw the figure. So that is step number two. It, but it's not really a step, but you, you need to know proportions. and. Which brings us to number three, that is shape. So after you understand and know the proportions, I would draw these, this guy vertically, or girl, whatever you want. This guy vertically, um, looking front, profile, back, in multiple different directions of orientation of the figure. And if you draw that multiple times, you'll start to understand where everything sits within the general proportions that I've drawn here. Okay. Now, shape. What is a freaking shape? Not just a shape, a freaking shape. A freaking shape is like a triangle, a circle, a really good one, not a bad one like this, and a square. So if we have these three different shapes, um, that's what we are dealing with. Now, what I like to do with my figures in the shape is making ellipses. An ellipse is just basically a squished circle, so it's more narrow on the sides than it is on the top and the bottom. Makes it a little bit longer like that. So that is an ellipse, and that's what I like to use. I know a lot of people like to use boxes for each of these proportions because they just think that way, which is totally fine, and it's good. I don't think there's really any right or wrong way, just as long as you have regular shapes. And shapes are consistent, consistently built through a series of lines. And these lines will build the shape. Now, after we get the shape, you go into forms. And forms are basically taking the shape and making it three-dimensional. So I'm gonna create a form by putting these back like that and adding that. So now I have depth. I have multiple dimensions. That creates form with this sphere, I can come in and put a cross contour line that goes that direction and another cross contour line that goes, I should probably draw these darker so you can see them. Cross contour line going this direction and a cross contour line going this direction around the ellipse. Okay, so now it starts to create some dimension. And then um, this triangle, I could just have it going back into space and putting that back line would create a sense of depth. All right, so after we get those proportions, we have them memorized and we start to work on the shape and we know these are the general proportions. So I put in the shape, these ellipses in the shape. Now I'm going to create some form. That's number four. Form can also be described with value instead of just adding additional shapes. But remember, we're trying to create a shorthand here. So we're trying to quickly draw the figure. So what I might do here for the form is this ellipse is fine and dandy, but maybe I need to define where the brow is or where the eyes sit within the brow. And then I'm going to make a flatter proportion or shape on the side of the head and then taper down the jawline. So he's got kind of a flat head there, which is totally fine. It's okay. Maybe I'm just telling myself that. 
But anyways, so here I'm going to create a flatter shape for or line underneath the nose. So now I'm already starting to describe certain information. Maybe it's the same thing here in the rib cage. Rib cage comes out, hits the widest point, comes down, and then it comes up and arches over. So now I'm defining the shape and I'm going to put the sternum here in the center and have the rib cage expand. Um, same thing with the pelvis. It's a flat plane that is here angled towards the viewer. And then it tapers down because it kind of sits back and away from the viewer. So I just described form using more lines and expanded on the shapes, which is gravy. If I'm trying to create a skeleton, now let's say you're, you're not trying to create a skeleton. You're just trying to create a good gesture drawing. Do you need to have all the skeletal structure in there? No, you don't. But the more information you give yourself, the more you can understand where things need to be. For example, if I have this rib cage now figured out, I can come in and express the obliques that come in over it. And then you have the legs that curve out like that. And then I can place in a neck. Right, and I can construct this figure through this framework that I've built for myself. But um, with a gesture, you don't really have to do that, and it is based off of time. So am I going to sit here and try to draw the contour of this figure if I'm trying to draw it in two minutes? Probably not. I would be a little bit more stylized in my approach. And if I had 10 minutes, though, I, I would probably come in and construct the figure and figure out where all the locations of various landmarks are at. That is the general understanding of drawing a gesture. Some people do it very artsy-fartsy and artistic. Other people, they just um, are very strategic in their placement and plan. So I'll, I'll draw another couple of things, starting through the line of action, doing proportions, shape, and then form. And I'm not using any reference. I'm just doing this out of my head because I feel like it is better to learn this mentally and memorize it than start to do it from observation so that you can apply what you're actually seeing as opposed to just drawing whatever you want. The, the model becomes a guide instead of the end result. So here, if I have the line that comes out, let's do something like that. If I take it and I cut it in half, which is about right there, go into fourths. And there's the bottom of the foot. So head would be, I'm going to use this line of action through the center of the head. You know, the rib cage, can it turn like this? No, it can't turn like that. But um, I will just throw it in kind of like that. Because the line of action, remember, can go through or around. And then we have the pelvis that would be compressed here with the body. And then halfway through, that would technically be the knee. But remember, that line of action can go between the legs or in front of the legs or behind the legs. It's whatever is expressing the pose. So if I have this point and I go, oh, there's the socket, and I come out like this to express where one of the knees is located, and then back like that to the heel. And I can come down and forward for the foot. And I can do the same thing with the back leg. Maybe it drops a little bit lower, comes back like that. And then what about arms? We gotta have some arms, right? So we'll have them say hi to everybody. So if it comes back like that, how long is the arm? Remember the arm is about the length of the rib cage, that upper arm, and then it comes back like that. There's the form. And this might look like a glorified stick figure, which is totally fine. I like having glorified stick figures. There's the backhand that's coming out to the side. So there I used the line of action. I expressed what the figure was doing within the line of action. And now I'm going to use other shapes to describe what's going on. So if I have another 30 seconds to be able to draw this, 
here is the arm. The other arm is kind of set back. So that tells me that the center line would be kind of like that. I'm just kind of flattening out those planes a little bit. And this one, the plane comes back like that and tucks under the rib cage behind the viewer. And it comes down like that. And then we have the legs that are coming and hitting off to the side. Now, there are some people that will say, um, oh, you need to draw a line that curves under and then a line that curves on the outside contour of the arm like that. And I don't know, I think these little floating arms doesn't provide too much structure to be able to build from. But you know, if you're into that, totally go for it. So um, that would be one way of doing it. Maybe this person is looking down. So I'm going to design a flat plane off to the side that represents the temporal bone. Here's the muzzle right there or the jaw temporal bone. And then you'd have like eye sockets that would come in here if you're wanting to get a little bit more specific, but that works for me. Just having that you can have the neck come down and curve around. So that would be the equivalent of like a, maybe a two minute gesture, maybe. A one minute gesture might have a line of action, kind of like this one, line of action, and maybe some other support structures. Maybe you don't even put the head in with a line of action. Maybe it's just, you're throwing in the upper torso and you're kind of top, and you're kind of putting in some arms and, and legs here. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with that pose, but that would be a good equivalent of a, a minute gesture. So I hope that this video explained a good amount on how to start doing a gesture and maybe doing the form instead of watching this, maybe I'd, I'd recommend actually doing it. And um, there are a couple of websites. I will put links down below on the websites where you can actually look up and set a time frame for each pose. And it will randomly select different poses you can do undraped or draped with some of these websites. Okay, one of them is figurosity.com and they only use 3D rendered figures, so they're not photographs. Lineofaction.com, quickposes.com, and reference.sketchdaily.net those all three have free resources for you to be able to uh, watch videos of models going through. There's also a couple on YouTube, um, but I have seen them remove the videos on YouTube, so I, I don't know how reliable they are. But I will put a link. I will put a link down below for you to be able to click on those websites and use those resources to be able to practice drawing a gesture. Now again, this is how I would do it you need to think of a quick, effective way to draw a gesture. And uh, the best way to figure that out is just by doing it, not by watching other people do it, but by doing it yourself. So I hope that, that this video really helps. And leave your comments below. If you think it's totally shoddy or good info, gravy, whatever works. All right, have a stellar day.